Hello again, I am Blunty. This time of year is always very exciting to be a gamer because we this is this is when the snowball starts. This is where all the big games start piling out in the in the in the flush to the end of the year to that holiday season. Uh, and this year is even more exciting than most because not only do we have that usual rush of the big name games coming out for the holiday season, but we also have new hardware coming out in the form of the new consoles. But also, as we all sort of drag ourselves to the end of the year, this miserable 2020 year, this catastrophically bizarre 2020 year, as we as we scrawl ourselves across the ground, one armed Terminator, you know, T-800 style at the end of Terminator, just, just trying to make it to the end, just trying to get the mission done before some whack job crashes crushes this beneath a massive hydraulic press. That metaphor might not have held up as well as I thought it would. Then again, 2020's not over, is it? Just in case 2020 does crush this all beneath a hydraulic press, would you do me a favour on, on your way, when, as you're dragging yourself across here, would you hit the thumb at the very least? Subscribe, ring the bell, comment especially. But the thumb, at the absolute bottom tier of the stuff, just to help me fight against the freaking algorithm. Speaking of AI that wants to destroy us all, the YouTube algorithm, don't even get me started. Please, just, yeah. October's going to be an insane month. We're getting more and more information about the consoles and new games. We're seeing more and more trailers and releases and announcements and stuff like that. But also the PC hardware side of things is getting very exciting. October 8th, we are going to get uh, the, the wraps pulled off. The Zen 3 architecture. The Ryzen 4000 series of CPUs. And... Well, so far, AMD have done nothing but take huge leaps forward in very impressive ways, and we're expecting nothing less of the Ryzen 4000 series CPUs. I'm very excited to see what's going on with those. 20 days after that, on October 28th, we're going to see the wraps pulled off the big Navi GPU architecture at last. We've heard little bits and pieces and dribbles and drabs about it uh, through mainly the console launches. Uh, but we're finally going to see it in its full official reveal form. There has already been some leaks uh, about the performance and a leaked benchmark, but we're going to roll back to that in a second. On October 15th, we're going to see the launch of the RTX 3070, which is going to be a very popular card I'm anticipating. I mean, we usually see the 3080, in this case the 3090, they're going to be the top tier cards that only, you know, a few percentage of, of absolute enthusiast gamers and hopefully a lot of YouTubers. <coughs> is anybody listening out there? Gigabyte, MSI, Asus. But there can be no doubt that the most popular series of cards, uh, particularly when you're talking about the NVIDIA stuff, are the something something 60 series. The GTX 1060 was an extremely popular card and remains to be an extremely popular card because most normal people only upgrade their graphics cards every two, three, four years perhaps on the outside. And as we're coming into the 3000 series, it's going to be time that those 1060 owners are going to be looking at what their next step up is uh, to continue to run their games at their absolute best. To that end, we have just had our first leaks about the inevitable RTX 3060. In this case, it's allegedly going to be called the 3060 Ti, presumably to leave room for a lower tier 3060 to come out later, probably with slower memory or something like that for an even lower price, just so they can undercut whatever AMD are going to do. Because this is where the, the fight for the hearts and minds of the gamer, the PC gamer, really lies, in that sort of middle-of-the-road GPU that's affordable but can still do games at ultra or at least high settings at 1440p or better. That's, that's, that's the standard we're shooting for these days. 1080p, it's on its way out. If you still got a 1080p screen, what are you doing? You caveman? Come join us in the future. So like I said, we've had our first believable leaks about what the 60 is going to be, the RTX 3060 Ti in this case. Let me read you some numbers to get to a little bit of perspective on where this is going to sit. Exactly. So, it is alleged to have 4,864 CUDA cores, that is 1024 less than the RTX 3070, or uh, in other terms, 17% less, which means 17% less tensor cores, 17% less RT cores. But it will have the same memory configuration as the RTX 3070, which means it has 8GB of GDDR6 non-X memory, same memory clocks, same memory bandwidth, same memory bus. And there is no doubt that this is going to be the card that most PC gamers out there are going to be the hungriest for because, well, like we said, we've got, we've got that tier system. You've got the 3080 and 3090 up the top there. The, that's the, that's the, that's what you reach for, but you can't really, most, most gamers can't justify that kind of price. Then you've got the 3070. That's where a lot of enthusiasts lie because that's a really nice balance point between getting sort of absolute top end performance and, you know, the highest level of graphics, but without spending that, you know, 80 money. Below that, that's where all the regular gamers sit. That's what they can justify spending 
to get really good performance, really lovely looking graphics without spending more money than they're prepared to spend just to game on, regardless of how enthusiastic they are about their gaming. And on the other side of that coin, we have just seen our first leaks of the Radian RX 6000 series card, or at least one of the cards. We have some leaked benchmarks results in Ashes of the Singularity, which is a benchmark I stopped using like two or three years ago because the game is basically irrelevant at this point. Despite getting good review scores, nobody really cared about it and it was only popular because the free benchmark just, it did something that other benchmarks of the day just weren't doing. Used to be useful, is not useful anymore in my opinion. But anyway, that's what we have. Someone benchmarked it in, in Ashes of the Singularity for some reason. But again, let me read the numbers so I get this right. It's supposedly clocked in at 5900 to 6200 points running with the crazy graphics setting at 4K. Uh, it was paired with an Intel i9-9900K, which is a pretty reasonable CPU to pair a graphics card with for benchmarking uh, gaming. And in perspective of the other AMD cards it will be replacing, that puts it uh, about 20% above an overclocked Radeon RX 5700 XT, which also puts it about on par with an RTX, a standard RTX 2080 Ti, not the Super. In reality, this is just a sideways glimpse of kind of maybe useful information because again, the Ashes of Singularity benchmark is more or less obsolete by today's standards and what we're looking at and what kind of games we're looking at. It doesn't tell us anything about machine learning, which AMD are going to have to compete with on NVIDIA because NVIDIA are doing some amazingly glorious things with their machine learning stuff these days and upscaling and all kinds of clever stuff to sort of boost performance without even noticing that you're, you know, missing information basically. They're tricking you, fooling you. Uh, but who cares if it works? And of course, ray tracing, which we haven't really seen on AMD. I mean, we've known for quite some time that they're going to have ray tracing. They've talked about it. That's in the new consoles even. And of course, the performance results would suggest this is their sort of middle of the road card. Their, their 3070 equivalent, basically, or what's going to be fighting against the 3070. So we still haven't seen their top tier card for the glorious PC Master Race 4K 60 plus FPS gaming kind of thing. Or... Uh, again, to put it in the context of what we've been talking about today with the NVIDIA stuff, the 3060 equivalent. Where are they going to match up on that? Are we going to see yet another generation where AMD's equivalent card is just a little bit lesser, but also cheaper? So they're, they're going for the value thing instead of the just knockout punch. Or are we finally going to see this generation of them doing what they did to Intel, like three years back, where the first generation of Ryzen chips came out and everyone went, oh, hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. And then a couple more generations came out and everyone went, oh, uh, AMD's the prime choice now, Intel. You're going to do something or are you just going to just keep overclocking your chips and make them hotter? Uh, from what I've been seeing some other, you know, pundits, let's say, uh, you know, tech tubers and things like that sort of talk about and say, oh, I've heard from my mysterious secret sources that this and this and this, so I can't say much. <laughs> if what they have been saying is anywhere close to true, then this generation is going to be extremely interesting. We might finally see AMD on the graphics card side of things go toe to toe with Team Green properly. So at the end of the day, if you are teetering on the edge of a pre-order, if you're just about to give in to that FOMO that NVIDIA loves to generate of, of all oh, limited availability, you might not get one, you better put your pre-order in, pre-order start now, put your money down or you might miss out. And that sort of stuff they love to generate because it gets people impulse buying. I would hold off. I would definitely hold off until the end of October. Unless you are sort of hardcore team green tribal, which is fine. NVIDIA have been extremely reliable uh, for many years now on their stuff and AMD have been a little bit rocky. I mean, I'm, I'm running a, a Radeon 7 in my secondary machine right now because the RTX 2080 Ti I was running in my main machine had to go back to Asus just before they announced the 3000 series card. So the 2060 that was in my secondary machine is now in my main machine because I want the RTX stuff to use with RTX voice for streaming and stuff like that. So the Radeon 7 is kind of a stopgap measure in my secondary machine. And when that first launched, uh, and this is where a lot of the shakiness comes from, uh, there were many driver issues. The drivers were all kinds of rocky and they just weren't ready, but they were just sort of shoved out the door because AMD felt like they had to do something because of what NVIDIA were doing. This time around, the word is they're not going to make the same mistake twice. The drivers are going to be rock solid and the, and the architecture generation leap that we're looking at uh, appears to be very rock solid as well. And of course, we're not only seeing it in the cards, but we're seeing it in the new generation of consoles as well. So it's going to be a big friggin' deal that this architecture works and works really, really well. I mean, the drivers for the Radeon 7 right now are absolutely solid, but it was kind of too little too late to help save the 
reputation of that generational launch of cards, but I think we're in for something different this time around, so yeah. Hold on to your purse strings until October. And if you do feel a desperate need to just throw some cash around because you just can, I mean, you could always throw some cash at uh, your favorite, I don't know, content creator by going to one of their live streams and subscribing or tipping or uh, popping into their patron, for example. <clears throat> and with that, thank you to the patrons scrolling above up top there. You make a fantastic difference. Thank you. I appreciate that with, with all of my meaty man heart. I don't know what that means. Take it however you want. Virtual hugs for all of you. Uh, and also for some of those of you who did the thumb in the comment and stuff as well. 